we're going to go ahead and try an application of the sum formula. And um, so what we're going to do is that we, we want to be able to write cosine of arc tan of 1 plus arc cosine of x as an, an algebraic expression. All right, so basically it's just in the terms now of just um, of just x, maybe some numerical values without any um, tr trig functions, or else it would be called a trig expression, which that's what this is already. So we want to get rid of all the sines and the cosines, tangents, and all that kind of stuff, and just have it in terms of numerical values and maybe just x in there. So, all right, well, uh, notice that this is in, in the form of our cosine sum formula, right? Like you can think of this right here. Uh, as our as our u, and you can think of this as our v. So basically, we're going to be doing cosine of u plus v. Okay, and that's just going to be cosine of u times cosine of v minus sine of u times sine of v. Okay, so that's what we're doing right here. So uh, we will be applying the sum uh, formula here in just a moment. So watch this. Let's let u equal arc tan of 1. So if u equals arc tan of 1. Well, that means if I take the tangent of both sides, if I take the tangent of this side, now this is going to be tangent of u equals, well, if I take the tangent of arc tan, the tan and arc tan cancel out, and, and then I just get 1. So that means the tangent of u equals just 1. Well, now what we can do is we can create a right triangle. Okay, and we're going to let right here this, this be u. So the tangent of u is 1. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it has to be 1 over 1. Right? I mean, if uh, it, has to be, it has to be the same value right here, so it's going to be 1. So that means if we solve for the hypotenuse, it would just be radical 2. All right. Now let's do the same thing over here. Let's let v, let v equal arc cosine of x. Take the cosine of both sides. So that means the cosine of v, if I take the cosine of arc cosine, both of those cancel out, and we're left with just x. So once again, we can create a right triangle. But instead of calling it u, now this is going to be v. This would be our v triangle right here. So cosine of v is just x, so that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to let the adjacent side be x, and this be 1. All right, so that means if I want to solve for this side, uh, it would be, you see, x squared plus something squared equals 1 squared, right? Well, I have to subtract, I have to subtract uh, the x squared, so this would be the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, and this, uh, uh, that's just by using the Pythagorean theorem, so... We can call this side C and then solve for this side right here. And I get uh, 1 minus, square root of 1 minus x squared. So actually, this is all that we need. So check this out. If I'm going to find now the cosine of arc tan of 1 plus arc cosine of x, all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the arc tan of 1 with u and replace arc cosine of x with v. So watch this then. So what's the cosine of u? Well, now look, I just go over to the u, and cosine is opposite over adjacent. So this whole guy right here is just going to become 1 over radical 2. Okay, so cosine of u, because I go over here to my triangle with my angle of u, is adjacent over hypotenuse. See? Now cosine of v, I, I go to v, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's just going to be times x minus sine of u. Go over here, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's uh, 1 over radical 2 again, times sine of v, and that's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's just the square root of 1 minus x squared. Square, one, square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, that's pretty sweet. They both have a common denominator of radical 2, and 1 times x is just x, minus uh, 1 times square root of 1 minus x squared is just the square root of 1 minus x squared. And I, I mean, I guess we could multiply top and bottom by radical 2, but that's just going to get really hairy, and there's no need to do that for this type of problem right here. Um, so this right here would be our algebraic expression. 
As you can see, there's no more trig functions involved to this. As long as we don't have the trig function, this now is going to be considered our algebraic expression.